sense of purpose and identity, an atmosphere of excellence, and parish self-awareness, understanding who we are and how others see us. So, if you were a group, I would ask, we would go through each of these questions and simply ask you to contemplate them. As a parish, we clearly understand our reason for existence, to serve the living God and share our love of God with others. How, how are we doing on that as a parish? Consider that. Our parish is not a club or cultural center, self-absorbed or passive. An atmosphere of striving and humbly offering our best pervades the community. A sense of effort, energy, and journey we're not, is apparent. We're not just surviving. Our parish vision is made concrete with a set of specific tailored ministries. Our parish budget reflects an orientation of improvement, development, and excellence. We care about delivering our light to the neighborhood or community. Usually, I'm surprised it wasn't on this list here, uh, usually that one of them says that I, I'll go through, people in our neighborhood know us for something more than food. So having offered those dimensions, sub-dimensions of this area, then I just simply ask everyone to score from zero to four this particular area. So it's, it's not hard. Vibrant worship. Liturgical preparedness, congregational participation, effective preaching. Joyful ascendant worship is at the center of our life. This is what we primarily do. We work hard to enhance the beauty, power, and zeal of our efforts to glorify God. We keep worship fresh, contagious, yet dignified, enlivening, holy, joyous, and peaceful, and thankful. We come to church more than on Sunday. We, we come to church on time. Ooh. Preaching is edifying, uplifting, nourishing, challenging, enlivening our, enlivens the worshiper's understanding of holy tradition and the gospel. Worship is better attended than administrative social, or social and fundraising events. So again, grade your paper, zero to four what you feel, and again, so what, we'll, what we do is we compile all these numbers and then we go back and find the area that people want to work on and then we pull that apart in greater depth. Shared leadership, delegating responsibility, leading an effective change, affecting change, functional structures, open financial practice. Lay leaders see themselves as leaders of a Christian community who are co-responsible under the rector's guidance for the help and health and vibrancy of the parish. This is a decent, in my opinion, description of the mission of a parish council. Parish councils are not about bills, budgets, and buildings. Yes, that is an aspect of what they do. Understanding the mission and the direction and the vision is the fundamental role of leadership bodies. Leaders do not see themselves as parish business managers, owners, disinterested commentators, or critics. Leaders lead and follow and model good Christian behavior. The level of structure in our parish is consistent with the kind of parish we want to become. If we're serious about wanting to grow, then we probably need a structure that will allow us to grow and will fit that growth. Open communication. So this is not just about your newsletter. We work to develop a culture of consensus about matters important to parish life, find solutions best for the body and not us personally. Important decisions are communicated well, clearly and appropriately. People who disagree are given that opportunity and they're listened. We look for people on the margins and we search for other ideas to improve them. Number five, I think, authentic community. An atmosphere of love, incorporation mechanisms, connectedness to the larger church and appropriate facilities. Christ is recognized in our midst. We've used these words before. We saw them in, uh, I think it was Colossians earlier. We encourage, exhort, and nurture one another. There's lots of laughter in our parish. 
We welcome newcomers readily. We're not a closed community available by birth, kinship, or ethnicity. Christian formation, and this is often one of the lower scoring. Orthodox spirituality, whole parish education, and financial generosity. And there's five, six, eight ideas here. We have a commitment to lifelong learning and personal spiritual growth. Do we see that as part of what we need to be doing in how we interact and how we own the opportunity of building a parish that can last for the granddaughter, great-granddaughters uh, into her old age? Proportional giving is a basic tenet of the parish stewardship efforts. Our achieving our annual budget is not dependent on fundraising or alternative sources of income. And there are others here, I'm not reading them all. Active service. And if you had to ask me what's one area that's important for a parish to adopt and work on that they may not have been working on, this would be it. To active service outside the parish to others. This includes understanding how people are gifted, what they're able to do and not do, who is best equipped to do various things, seeing that many people have active roles, and they're contributing in their area of giftedness, setting a clear and externally, internally and externally focused ministries, having an appropriate balance between local Sometimes, you know, it's whatever ethnic group we're dealing with, it's fairly easy sometimes to give money or something to the old country, but it's not so easy to give it to the person next door, the person that we can touch and see and experience. Each of our ministries has a clear purpose that befits a Christian community. And often this requires some pruning. In a parish that's 80, 100, 120 years old, things have crept in that probably are no longer needed or are holy. And finally, spreading the gospel, one holy Catholic and apostolic. We have practices and an atmosphere of evangelization. We communicate effectively outside our parish, and this is an area where I often talk a lot about websites, but we need to learn to communicate effectively. The purpose of a parish website is not to communicate internally. That is your, this is your identity billboard. And if you're expecting to attract them, you have to speak in a way that makes, makes them feel wanted and welcome and not like they have to have certain qualities that they don't have. 